So one of the questions I got asked today was how to add that shadowy border frame effect that they see in a lot of photos recently. And um, I have two, two different ways to do it. They're very similar. One just actually has a couple more steps. So let's get started. Now, I'm going to do this like I always try and do, keep it as simple as possible. And what I'm going to do, once I have my image all set up and ready to go, I'm going to come down to the Custom Shape tool. And I'm going to choose a rectangle. You can choose any one you want, but I'm going to go with rectangle, so because I know I can change it later. Anyway, we need to come up top to the options bar, make sure we're set on shape, and then the fill, you're going to see in a minute that we're going to remove it so it really doesn't matter what color we choose, even if we choose this hideous pink. And the stroke we want to set to none. And now I just come down to my document and draw on the rectangle. And it really doesn't matter where I place it or if it's in the right size or big enough because we can always edit it. But I'm just going to put it in the ballpark. I'm going to click and drag to draw my rectangle. And then hit the enter key to accept. And you see we get this really hideously bright pink rectangle. Now like I said, don't worry about the color because we're going to get rid of that in a minute. And what we're going to do is come down to the layer in the layers panel and we're going to double click to bring up the layer style option box click to bring the image over so we can see it and the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're on blending options and then come down to advanced blending and fill opacity and drop the fill opacity to zero and then we just want to come down and add the drop shadow now just like any of the others instead of clicking once to check it and then clicking again to get the options in the middle I just click once to do both. And you can see in the image now we have that shadow box effects that they like. And usually, I already had that set, usually it comes up as black as a default color. And that's a pretty good dead giveaway that you've used to drop shadow. So what I always like to do is just click on that and then sample a color from the image. So then it blends in a little. I mean, it's still obvious that a drop shadow is applied, but it's just not as, as blatant as a black. We'll hit OK and then hit OK. And the cool thing is, if you didn't get in the right spot, not a problem. With the layer selected and your move tool selected, you can just click on the shape and drag it around to where you want it to be. If you need to resize it, just Control T. And you can resize it however you want. If you need to rotate it, you can do that too. Enter to accept. And now you have that frame effect on there that you want. I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer and show the second way to do it. And like I said, it's very similar, but you'll see the slight differences. So again, we're going to use a custom shape. I'll grab the ellipse this time. It doesn't matter. And the difference here is that I'm going to turn the fill off. I'm going to set it to none and the stroke to none, still on shape. And I'm going to come down to the document and I'm going to draw out a circle. Now you can see you can see the outline of the path right now, so you know you've drawn the circle, but like before when you hit enter, now it disappears, or it seems to disappear, and that's always a little disconcerting to people. That's why I showed the other method first. But again, just like before, we come down to the layer, double click. The difference here is there's no fill to drop the opacity on, so we just go straight to drop shadow and hit OK and we're right back where we were before. So it skips two, three clicks of your mouse. And again, you can move it around. You can resize. If you didn't want a circle, you could, you could resize it to get more of an ellipse. And there's the effect.